Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted the sky part of four different paintings. These are all from demos that are here on the channel which I shall leave links to the full demonstrations in the description below if you're interested in watching the entire thing. I thought it would be interesting just to look at painting four different types of grey skies from a sort of purpley grey through to a really dark grey with looming clouds and an oncoming storm to slightly sort of paler, more muted grey skies. And I'm hoping if I just share my thoughts about how I've painted each of these very different skies that it'll give you some ideas to take forward into your painting practice. So in this demo, I'm just focusing in particular on methods and techniques that I use. Obviously, there are as many methods and techniques as there are of artists, but I thought if I share some of these with you, then it might be helpful for you in your own painting practice. But if you're interested in specific details uh, for each of the skies, then please follow the links below to the full tutorials. This first painting is for a dramatic stormy sky. My board is at an angle of about 45 degrees, so quite a steep angle and gravity is really going to help to create these effects. So working with a large mop brush and getting some raw sienna onto the page, onto the dry page, across the horizon line, working up the page, and then using cobalt violet across the top of the paper, uh, bringing the two together so that they begin to blend in the middle and gravity will help the paint to run. This is a bit of indigo, I think, now that's been added to deepen the shadows and then continuing to blend the raw sienna and these lovely purpley grey tones together to create some movement in the sky. As the paint runs down in the middle, we're creating the look of a rain, enormous rain cloud uh, raining in the distance across the horizon. And of course, where my page is wet with paint, I've now created a wet in wet environment for these lovely soft diffusions of paint, but still a few dry patches here and there. So I've got some harder edged clouds showing through where the paint's running down the page towards the horizon where the paper is then dry. It pulls up a bit. So I use a clean damp brush just to remove that bead of paint and then going in with some darker shadows with Payne's Grey. This time using a richer, drier mix of paint so that I don't cause any cauliflowers or runbacks by using sort of wetter paint than I need. I can also use a clean, damp mop brush to soften some of these areas. I'll just mention, of course, the compression bandage I'm wearing is because when I was painting this, I had an arthritis flare. So continuing to clean up the horizon line. And here you can see I've moved forward. I used some dry brush to put in some C. If you want to see that, then please follow the links below to see the full tutorial. And I'm going to finish off the sky by using a clean damp brush. And just before the painting dries, I'm going to lift out some lighter areas with the brush first, and then with a piece of crumpled tissue or paper towel, very gently dabbing around the edges of that shape to lift out some sort of feathery faint marks from the almost dry page. This will give me a bit of depth and distance and gives me some sort of wispy, sort of softer edges to the cloud. And here's the first sky finished. So here we have created multiple layers of cloud and that lovely storm at sea. So let's move on to sky number two. This is a line and wash painting, so I started with a pencil sketch and then went over it with waterproof ink to set the scene of this little yacht and a harbour. If you want to see the whole painting, then of course the link is in the description below. I'm going to be painting this sky wet in wet, so using my one and a half inch mottler brush, 
I'll wet the sky all over using sort of mostly horizontal brush strokes. Now I'm going to wet down across the horizon and wet the water area as well so I can have the same colour of the sky reflected in my water. Once the sky and the water are nice and wet, then I can dip into some pale raw sienna and streak that across the sky, fairly low down. And then I go into some Payne's Grey and use that to paint across the top of the sky. And um, I didn't switch the camera on for that bit, but you can see how I've painted around a few little patches of dry paper as well. And I'm introducing some slightly darker Payne's Grey closer to the top and then streaking the tips of my brush through the sky and getting these lovely soft diffusions and gentle gradations in the sky. Paler across the horizon and then bringing that same colour down across the water, keeping my brush strokes horizontal so that my water is nice and flat and continuing with the graduated wash so the water is darker across the bottom in the foreground, sort of reflecting the cloud shadows in the sky. And so that's the sky just about finished. But once I'd put in the land, the harbour and the little yacht, there was one more touch that I needed to do was to paint in wet onto the dry painting um, a slightly darker shadow across the water to differentiate between the sea and the sky. And that's the sky and sea just about finished. Um, I hope you like seeing this nice simple sky here. I think the light across the horizon really works nicely and I like the way the sky is reflected in the water. Now on to sky number three and I've painted in a little bit of land to start with in this one and now I'm going to be using I think it's cobalt turquoise to get a slightly blue glow at the base of my sky using a large mop brush and painting onto the dry page this this is another sky that I'm painting using the wet on dry technique just um, mixing up some um, stronger paint and I'll go across the top of my page with Payne's Grey. Nice and rich, almost straight from the tube. You can see there's no diffusions happening because I'm going onto the wet page there. This is a bit of, I think, sepia or burnt umber mixed into that beautiful Payne's Grey. Spreading it out across the sky. And you can see, because my board's at an angle of about 30 degrees, that the uh, paint is running down through the wet areas of the page. And I can sort of exploit that as I work, just pulling down slight different variations of colour. And now what I can do is rotate my board 90 degrees, spray with a water spray, really get that paint flowing. It's now going to run down the page. I can tip and tilt it, watching the paint and get the paint to move exactly where I want it to so that it flows into these uh, wet spaces and gives me this beautiful, dramatic sky with a little bit of blue at the base, but plenty of white, unpainted parts of the painting for clouds. This is a really interesting technique for painting skies and one that if you like this, it's really worth persevering with because you can create some amazing skies using this wet and wet sort of tipping and tilting method. You can use this tipping and tilting method with wet in wet painting right from the start or as I did here by introducing really rich paint onto the dry page first and then spraying it with a water spray. You can get make any adjustments while the painting is still tipped and then as soon as it starts to look the way you want it to look and you don't want the paint to run anymore then you can turn your painting back round and you can lay the painting flat and then your washes won't move anymore. 
So here is sky number three, and it's a really interesting technique. It's well worth practicing. Don't worry if it doesn't work out for you the first few times, but if you keep practicing, then you'll find that you'll master this technique, which is really unpredictable, but a very exciting way to paint. Okay, so let's look at the last sky, sky number four. And for this last sky, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I've sketched a cottage, a bay and a foreground hill in pencil first. And then I'm going to wet the sky all over with my one and a half inch mottler brush. So this is going to be a wet in wet sky. I'm going to start off with some Payne's Grey and I'm using a large mop brush for this. Any brush will do. Pulling it across the page, allowing the paint to diffuse. My board is at a shallow angle of about 20 degrees. Now this is indigo with a bit of Payne's Grey. The indigo has darkened up the Payne's Grey and blued it up a bit. And you can see now the paint is beginning to run down the page. So I'm working quickly across the paper trying to keep some sort of subtle cloud shapes, so sort of a subtle glow. You can see that the wet in wet effects are happening, softly diffusing in places where there are a few strips of dry paper. I'm getting some slightly harder edges. So it's a balancing act now of softening some areas and lightening them up and then adding a little more paint and darkening other areas and then using these sort of soft, gentle diagonal brush strokes and horizontal brush strokes to influence the orientation of my sky. It's really important not to overwork it. I'm nearly at the stage where I need to stop. Just a few finishing touches. Straightening up the horizon line. And as soon as it looks almost done, step away and let it dry. And here's the finished painting. I think there's a subtle drama in this big sky. The sky takes up almost three quarters of the painting and so it becomes the dominant feature. So that's it for today's video, looking at four ways of painting grey skies. Don't forget to check out the links below if you're interested in watching the full tutorials for each of these four. And please let me know in the comments below if you like this sort of format of covering a few different areas in one video like this. So many thanks for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.